Hi, everybody. I'm Greg, senior pastor here at Park Avenue Church in Minneapolis. Thank you for continuing uh, to connect with us for Park's online worship. We're really glad you've decided to, to join us today. Did you know that we started worshiping together in person? Uh, and if you're anywhere in the Twin Cities, I'd love to meet you face to face. And that would be masked face, <laughs> the masked face, of course. The park's outdoor black top worship is, it's COVID safe. And we meet on Sundays at 9 a.m. at 3400 Park Avenue in Minneapolis. And join us. And, and just a note, on September 20th, the time for outdoor worship will change to 10 a.m., just so you know. And. I wonder if you'd like to keep up to date with uh, all that's going on at Park Avenue Church. You may be thinking, uh, I don't know. I think you're talking about another email list, aren't you? And I get that, you know. But we sure would like to communicate with you. So if you'd like that too, all you have to do is go to our website, parkavchurch.org and click the stay up to date tab and there you'll you'll well you'll find it at the top right corner of the website and i promise we'll try not to fill up uh, your inbox and from wherever you're watching today thank you for continuing to give to the park avenue church we are really blessed by your giving folks who are members here folks who are watching online Folks from different parts of the country can uh, can use our text to give offering feature, which is secure and it's easy. And it's one of the best ways I know uh, to give from anywhere that you are. And all that you have to do is just open the text app on your phone and send a text with your offering to, ready for the number? 888-318. 8032. And we want to include as many people as we can in this goodness that is Park Avenue Church. So if you're participating with us on Facebook or YouTube, I wonder if you take just a second to click that share button that's located in your app to invite others to, uh, to participate uh, in this uh, online worship uh, with you. And now I want to throw it over to Darrell Williams for our call to worship. Thank you so much for that, Pastor Greg. Good morning, Park Avenue. This is Darrell Williams, the youth director. Let us prepare our hearts and our minds for the call to worship. Our hearts were made for the glory of God. Let us render our hearts to God. We were made in the image of God. In God's likeness, we've been called to live. Lift up your hearts and let us walk together with lifted hearts and lifted hands, we have come. So come and let us rejoice. Amen. I know we're trying to go through this dispensation of COVID-19. This song comes to encourage each and every one of you. You do have a hiding place. That place is in the rock. 
When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Oh Lord, when my heart is overwhelmed, I'm praying you lead me to the rock. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I, oh Lord, higher than I. Lead me to the rock. Lead me. Lead me to the rock. Lord, lead me. Lead me to the rock. Don't know which way to go. Lead me to. To the rock, to the rock that's higher than I. Oh Lord, when my heart is so overwhelmed, will you please lead me?
Thank you for joining me in intercessory prayer as we pray together for others and our community and our world. We should feel confident going to God in prayer and expecting something to happen with anticipation. In the book of Joshua, the Lord tells Joshua to be strong and courageous as God gives him his marching orders. God tells him, I am with you. Do not be dismayed or discouraged. We can count on God like no other. Let us pray together. Thank you, Lord, for giving us this week. Even though there may have been some hard and good things happen to us, we can still say thank you. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for us. We can say, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Lord God, we are grateful for all the ways that you continue to keep us. You keep on providing for us. You keep on loving us, even when we are not acting lovable. We cannot hide from you. You know every detail about us. We ask for your forgiveness as a church and on behalf of the ways we have not been there for our neighbor. Give us the courage to stand up for what is right in the face of evil and injustice. Help us to be the action and the voice for the voiceless and the vulnerable. God, we pray that you would have mercy on us as a country for not putting you first in everything and sinning against you. Forgive us. We pray for the people and states who have had devastation from fires out of control, have lost lives, have been displaced and lost everything they have. We pray for those supplies needed in medical care would reach those places affected in time to bring some relief. We lift up the unemployed, the sick, and those who do not know which way to turn because of so many events that have turned their lives upside down. Lord, we pray for your mercy and grace. We do take a moment to pause and ask for your healing for those in need in our congregation and comfort for those who are hurting from loss or anything else. We cannot do anything without you and realize that you are the only one who can change us from the inside out to be more like you, Jesus. Be gracious and merciful to us. We need those fruits of the Holy Spirit even more in these difficult days. We speak and ask for love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control. God, please take control. We now pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and, and the, the glory, glory now and forever. forever. Amen. Amen and amen. Hello, Park Avenue. It's time now to worship God through our giving. But first, Let's lift our voices together and sing.
Hebrews 13, 16 says, And do not forget to do good and to share with others, for with such sacrifices God is pleased. Today's scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 14, verses 1 through 3 and 15 through 24. It's the parable of the great dinner. I'll be reading from the message. One time Jesus went for a Sabbath meal with one of the top leaders of the Pharisees, and all the guests had their eyes on him, watching his every move. Then Jesus turned to the host, this religious leader. The next time you put on a dinner, don't just invite your friends and family and rich neighbors, the kind of people who will return the favor. Invite some people who never get invited out, the misfits from the wrong side of the tracks. You'll be and experience a blessing. They won't be able to return the favor, but the favor will be returned. Oh, how it will be returned at the resurrection of God's people. Well, that triggered a response from one of the guests. Oh, how fortunate the one who gets to eat dinner in God's kingdom. Jesus followed up, yes, for there was once a man who threw a great dinner party and invited many. And when it was time for dinner, he sent out his servant to the invited guests saying, come on in, the food is on the table. Then they all began to beg off one after another, making excuses. The first said, I bought a piece of property and I need to go look at it, send my regrets. Another said, I just bought five teams of oxen and I need to check them out send my regrets. And yet another said, I just got married and need to get home to my wife. The servant went back and told the master what had happened. He was outraged and he told the servant, quickly, get out into the city streets and alleys, collect all who look like they need a square meal, all the misfits and homeless and wretched you can lay your hands on and bring them here. The servant reported back, master, I did what you commanded and there's still room. The master said, then go to the country roads. Whoever you find, drag them in. I want my house full. And let me tell you, not one of those originally invited is going to get so much as a bite at my dinner party. Oh, so say it with me. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You know, I used to be part of an annual Christmas celebration for kids, most of whom had never been to anything resembling any kind of celebration in their lives. So there's great food, party music, beautiful decorations, and the Christmas story about a family on the run with no place to go. And once during one of these parties, a volunteer had to leave the festivities a little early. And on our way to the parking lot, one of the kids, this spunky, tiny little guy, ran after her into the parking lot. He shimmied right up next to her, keeping step with her as she walked and asked like he couldn't believe she was leaving all this goodness. He said, where are you going? The party is that way. He pointed back from where they just come from. Where are you going? That's an excellent question. If the party is that way, if all the fun, the music, the dancing, the laughter, the delight, the revelry, the life-giving joy of celebrating with others is that way, why are you going the other way? And if, if the stuff that drags you down, pulls you apart, and excludes you from life is this way, why not head that way? Don't you see he's saying the party is that way? Where are you going? So I wonder if that's at least part of what Jesus is getting at, what he's communicating through this parable. It's a simple story, right? Someone decides to host a huge dinner party, invites a whole lot of people, goes to great expense and effort to create this blowout event of food, music, dancing, laughter for people we can all assume are the usual party-going crowd. But at the last minute, with all the food prepared and the celebration about to begin, every single person on the A-list decides they're not coming. Every single one. And they offer a series of lame excuses for not showing up. I bought some property and need to look it over. Can't make it. I just bought five teams of oxen and need to check them out. Can't make it. You know what? I just got married and need to get home to my wife. Uh, can't make it. Everyone is too busy, too preoccupied, too self-concerned, 
and frankly, too indifferent to the host and just plain uninterested. Well, the host of the party can't believe it. He's outraged at these egotistical, self-absorbed so-called A-listers. So you know what he does? He invites all the people typically not included or welcomed at such soirees. People not on the A-list, people not on the B-list or C-list or D, people not on any list, people of the street, in the alleys, and inside pay-by-the-hour motels, people who don't have food to fill their stomachs or clean clothes to cover their backs, the misfits, displaced and dislocated, the hurting, hungry, and broken. He invites them all. And you know what? They all say yes. But even with them all coming to the party, when the host realizes he's got more food and more room than he knows what to do with, that there's more party to go around, he sends out a second wave of invites. He pulls in people from further and further out on the margins, whoever he can find who might enjoy a little bit of celebrating. And this party is epic. His house is full of people who say yes. And unfortunately, those who said no, who chose to go in another direction, well, they've missed something truly spectacular. So where are you going? The party is that way. You know, of course, this is a parable of what the kingdom of heaven, this kingdom of God is like. It's a story of a God whose deepest desire is to delight in people and whose greatest joy is to create a generous space for people to move beyond their self-interested, self-protected boundaries to celebrate and welcome one another. There's a party going on right here, (laughs) a celebration. I'm hearing cool in the gang in my head right now. Kind of makes me want to dance. Here's the thing. Celebration is a tangible, palpable expression of what it means to be a relevant church in this world. So imagine with me what might happen when we, the church, cultivate celebration as an overflowing expression of God's compassion. What about transforming the human heart? Would it look like that? To love one another is to actively celebrate each other recognizing and applauding even seemingly small changes or accomplishments, taps us into God's compassionating love. And as an expression of God's way of actually loving the world, celebration transforms the human heart, creating love-giving energy and releases more and more of God's love, rubbing off on more and more people. Every child, every youth, every adult, and every person from every walk of life needs to know that they are a source of joy. We all need to be celebrated. We all need someone or a group of someone's to beat the drum on our behalf. God created you to be a sight to behold and calls us to pay attention to someone other than ourselves. Love honors and love celebrates. So being intentional about it as individuals and as a church actually expands our capacity to receive love. It deepens our experience of being God's beloved and supercharges our willingness to get out there and love others. The party is that way. And that's the way of God's party. How about this? Would you agree that when we learn to celebrate each other, the direction of our lives reorients toward what is life-affirming and love-confirming? Actively practicing celebration, intentionally recognizing and extending grace as a community restores our collective capacity to say yes to others, yes to ourselves, and perhaps to hear for the very first time the divine yes of God's resounding applause deep within a heart that has only listened to a diminishing no. I have a friend in Los Angeles who grew up in the streets of South Central. Gang life was all his family knew. It was all he knew until he ran into some people who treated him with compassion, accepted him with kindness, and welcomed him with this big embrace. I was with him when he got the opportunity to participate in a panel discussion about getting out of the gang and turning his life around. After he finished sharing his experience, thoughts, his hard-won wisdom, everyone in the audience rose to their feet and gave him a standing ovation. (sighs) I got chills at the back of my neck. It was one of those holy ground moments to see my friend soak in the affirmation he wasn't used to, to drink in the delight he'd been deprived of. He was so moved and surprised by everyone's encouragement, he was stunned. It changed him. And I'll never forget what he said later 
about how that affected him. No one ever clapped for me before, he said. The party is that way. And that's the way of the party, God's party, which invites us to bask in God's lavish love and to be the hands of God applauding one another, those who've never been applauded. And something else happens when we see the church as cultivating celebration as an overflowing expression of God's compassion. This is what happens. Compassion-fueled celebration closes the gap of isolation and estrangement, which many in our neighborhood, city, and world feel. God not only appeared in the world where humanity is broken and burdened with sin and failure, writes theologian Ray Anderson, but God assumed that broken humanity through Christ in order to overcome the estrangement humans suffer from God and from each other. This is the divine act of reconciliation, which issues from the very core of God's love and is fulfilled through Christ. And you know what? This divine act of reconciliation from our estrangement continues through Christ's presence in the church, the body of Christ. God's love has a human face, your face. Human arms, your arms, and a human heart, your heart, filled with divine compassion, inviting all to accept the embrace. So celebration returns us to God, returns us to ourselves, returns us to each other. When we know that there is a church, a community that lets us know that we matter, it creates the relational context through which we begin to believe and continue to trust that we matter to God too. The party is that way, and that's the way God's party, the place where we realize a return to God, ourselves, and one another is that way. The place where we know we matter is that way. The place where we know there is more to this life than what sucks the life out of us is that way. That way is the place and space of celebration flowing out of God's compassionating love. So don't you think everyone needs the church to be that? A redemptive movement? that celebrates people, affirms them, notices them, welcomes them, includes them? Don't you think everyone needs the church to be a place where people know that their stories matter, that they matter? Don't you think everyone needs the church filled with people who are not unaccustomed to celebration, a church filled with people who clap when they come into the room? Don't you think we need... Each needs someone else to notice who we are, that we are here, and more importantly, to be glad we are. When the church is that way, hearts are transformed. When the church is that way, life is affirmed and love is confirmed. When the church is that way, and grow, these growing gaps of isolation and estrangement are closed. And I believe if we practice celebrating each other and honoring the beautiful life each of us holds within us, we may just find ourselves captured by a God who takes great delight in throwing a party in our honor, especially honoring those of us who have little or no experience of anyone celebrating us at all. Celebration is participating in a grace that creates a wide welcoming embrace for everyone. I guess that's why Jesus shows up at parties and to tell you the truth, why he tells stories about these kinds of parties God likes to put on. And by the way, often these parties, to the dismay and the disgust of religious people, we all need someone to say to us as we're walking in another direction, where are you going? The party is that way. It's a celebration that pulls God's grace out of the sky and into your life in a way that you can taste and see, smell and touch, hear and feel. The grace of God means something like this, says Beekner. Here is your life. You might never have been, but you are, because the party wouldn't have been complete without you. So the party invitations have been sent to everyone, including you. The preparations made. The band is playing. You hear it? And the food is on the table. You smell it. And all that remains is for you to say yes, because the party is that way.
And as we close, I wonder if you'd give me the gift of lending me your eyes just for a moment, and if you would receive this word of grace even through the screen. To this one who is able to keep you from falling, and even when you do fall, is able to help you back up and bring you into fullness before God's presence. To Jesus, our Savior, be glory and majesty, power and honor, and to Jesus alone. And we all say together. And like we say each week. I can, I can do, do all things. things. To Jesus Christ, who strengthens me. And together, we can do all things through Jesus Christ, who strengthens us. Amen. 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 Thank you for joining us today. It means a lot that you're here with us. We pray that this has been a meaningful and inspiring experience for you. Let us know how we can connect with you further, or if you'd like information about being involved at Park, send us an email at info at parkavchurch.org. The work of Park Avenue Church is sustained by generous people who include Park in their financial giving. You can give safely and securely by following this link. Thank you, and God bless.